Good evening, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please take a moment to share. So um, we are live on the Elizabeth Independence page, the Coalition of Independence page, as well as the Elizabeth Independent YouTube page. So please take a moment to share. Thank you guys so much for joining us. So today, um, of course, before we get started, we are definitely going to pray. But before we get into our actual lesson, we're going to have a bit of fun tonight. So if you joined us for the last session, I think you're going to enjoy what we will be doing before we get started. And I'm just going to leave a bit of suspense there for you to find out exactly what it is. So please bow your heads. Father, we thank you so much for this evening and for bringing us together. We thank you once again that you are using this opportunity to empower your people. Father, we ask that you continue to use us to go into the various places, Lord, that you know you want us to go into and to fulfill the purpose that you have for our lives. Father, we ask that you would continue to open the doors that we need to be open. Father, we know that you are the Lord of opportunities. You are the way maker. Lord, there is nothing that we cannot do with you. And you are the one that makes everything possible. So we ask you, Lord, to just continue to open up our minds, continue to guide us, and just lead the way. Be a light unto our feet and a way unto our path, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you guys once again for joining us tonight for the 4X classes. So this is part two or lesson two. So tonight I heard um, you guys and we will definitely be going for the hour. In fact, we might be going a little beyond if you guys are willing to stay on with us. So we have a lot of information that we're going to be sharing tonight. We're actually going to be looking at our charts and learning how to read those charts. So, or at least how to use them. So that being said, let us get started with our first activity for tonight. Um, what I actually wanted to leave you guys in suspense of. So if you have another device, I would like to ask you to please get it. If you have someone that is nearby that has another device that they are willing to let you use, and I would like to ask you to please definitely um, ask them to use it so that you can sign on for this um, activity or session. All right. So give me one moment to bring up my screen so you guys can see what we are doing. So in the meantime, guys, please share, share, share. Please give everyone you know the opportunity to participate in these classes. What I am teaching you guys, I actually learned from uh, Market Traders Institute. It is one of the world's most accredited trading institutions. Um, so please definitely invite your friends, invite your family, and um, allow them to have this opportunity to also grow and to learn more about investing. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready. I hope you have your devices. So can you guys please go to kahoot.it. I am about to share it. So we are going to be playing in teams because if you guys have um, other persons with you in the room, then you guys will actually get to work together in order to get the correct answer. So as um, any teacher would, you will have the opportunity to test your knowledge from last week. So guys, this is gonna be fun. This is not gonna be like um, when you were in school and the teacher would give you tests. No, this is actually gonna be fun. So um, you can go to kahoot.it as shown to the top of the screen. And once you go there, 
then you can actually um, participate in this. You should be able to type in the game pin and type in your nickname. So we're gonna give you guys an opportunity to go to kahoot.it, um, as well as those that are here in the office with us. You can feel free to go to kahoot.it. Just type that into your browser and type in the game pin. All right, so we're just going to give you guys an opportunity. So good night to everyone that is online. So once again, in order to participate in this session or this activity, just so we can test your knowledge from last week, can you please go to kahoot.it if you are just joining us. Welcome, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, once again, we want to empower our people from now. I mean, why wait until after elections or why wait until um, any other moment than now? This is when we can move forward together. If you have the opportunity, why not take it? So once again, welcome to anyone that is joining us for the first time. Um, if you have a separate device, can you go to kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. So just type that into your browser, kahoot dot I-T. And type in the game pin that you see on my screen, which is 260476. Once again, that is kahoot.it260476 is the game pin. So once again, the game pin is 260476. Let me know if you guys can see my screen, please. not, then I will stop sharing and start sharing it again so you can see the screen. All right, no worries, Valentina. If you're on your phone, then you can just um, tag along and answer the questions with us as we go through the questions. But again, tonight is just a moment where you get to test your knowledge from last time, um, a moment to have fun. And really enjoy the experience of learning more about investing in um, the Forex. So thank you guys. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Let me know if you see it. Um, can you guys see my screen? So the code, one second, let me just make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, I will try one more time. Let me know if you guys can see it. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm seeing that you guys are having some issues with seeing the screen. Um, so I will just read off what is on there. Um, hopefully at least some of you can see the screen. So, okay, we have two persons on thus far. We're gonna wait for at least one more person to come on. Once again, we are doing this in team mode, which means um, you don't only have to work, um, focus on what you remember. You can invite your entire family to join with you. So whoever is, whether you're at the office, whether you are on the way home, and um, maybe you're in the back seat, because of course you don't want to be the one driving while watching this. <laughs> so maybe you're in the back seat, you have others in the car with you, and they can participate with you. Uh, maybe you're at home and you want your family to participate. So you can share this knowledge with everyone that is around you. Um, so we're just gonna give about two more minutes so we can have more persons coming on. Once again, you can go to kahoot.it. The game pick is 260-476. I saw someone typed it in the chat earlier. So can you guys please um, once again, go to kahoot.it, and the game pin is 260-476. You can type in whatever nickname you want to put in there. Um, you can see someone just decided to put um, various letters instead of spelling an entire name, um, which I think probably makes sense. So it's up to you guys. All right, we're going to give two more minutes for presence to be able to join, and then we'll get started. So hopefully you guys will be able to see my screen soon. I am just going to try this one more time. Thank you, Justina. Thank you, Tania, for typing it in the chat. So let's try this one more time. And you guys can let me know if you can see my screen. So um, we have four teams in now. We have one more minute to go, and then we are going to get started. So at 8.18, uh, we are going to be closing off and getting started. So welcome, Dolly. Welcome, Nikki. Welcome, PSSR. Welcome, Rano. Thank you guys so much for signing in and participating in this activity. Um, I hope you guys really did pay attention from last week, but that is the point of this exercise. So you get to test your knowledge. You get to have fun with Forex. <laughs> All right, so it is 8.18. Um, we are going to get started. So this is a refresher for lesson from lesson one for lesson two. So what does Forex stand for? That's the first question. What does Forex stand for? So is it forever exchanged? Is it fortune experience? Is it foreign exchange? Or is it foreign experience? So forever exchanged is red or the triangle. Fortune experience is yellow or the circle. Foreign exchange is blue or the diamond. And foreign experience is green or the square. So um, which one do you guys think it is? Is it red forever exchanged, which is the triangle? Is it yellow fortune experience, which is the circle? Is it blue foreign exchange, which is the diamond? Or is it green foreign experience, which is the square? What does Forex stand for? Foreign exchange, which is blue, the diamond. Foreign experience, which is green, the square. Forever exchange, which is red, the triangle, or fortune experience, which is yellow, the circle. So let us know what you think. We are just waiting on one more person. Okay. So two persons got it correct. Great job, guys. It stands for foreign exchange. So forex, F-O-R-E-X, is short for foreign exchange. All right. 
So let's keep going. Question number two, which is not a Forex trading session? Is it the Asian session, which is red, or the triangle? Is it the New York session, which is yellow, or the circle? Is it the European session, which is blue, or the diamond? Or is it the day session, which is green, or the square? What do you guys say? Which is not a Forex trading session? So if you guys remember, there are four trading sessions that happen um, throughout the 24-hour time period that the Forex market is open from Sunday 5 p.m. to Friday 5 p.m. So which session is not an actual session? Is it the Asian session, which is red, and it's the triangle? Is it the New York session, which is yellow, or the circle? Is it the European session, which is blue, or the diamond? Or is it the day session, which is green, or the square? Which one do you guys think it is? Feel free, if you're not able to sign on, if you didn't get the chance to sign on in time, type it inside the chat. Let us know what you think. So the answer is... Um, the day session is not a forex trading, sorry, trading session. So you have day traders. These are people that trade um, within a 24-hour time period. So they enter a trade and they exit a trade within a 24-hour time period. That's a day trader, but you do not have a day session. So you have the Asian session, the New York session, the European session, and the London session. So the London session is one of the most volatile or the one that has the most people in it. It moves most rapidly. That's the London and the New York session, especially when they cross over. Um, and then, well, the European session and the London session is actually the same. So that would be the Sydney session that was left out. The Sydney session, um, people usually don't mention it. They usually include that within the Asian session but there are four official sessions. So moving on to our next question. Great job, Nikki. Which are considered market movers? Is it retail traders? Now I'm gonna give you guys a hint on this one. Retail traders are individuals that are trading. So I didn't give you the actual term last time, so I'm gonna give you that hint. Is it retail traders, which are us individual traders? Is it the stability of the economy? Oh, and this one has three possible answers. Um, is it economic news or is it governments and central banks decisions? So retail traders is red, which are considered market movers. Is it retail traders, which is red or the triangle? Is it the stability of the economy, which is yellow or the circle? Is it economic news, which is blue or the diamond? Or is it the governments and central banks decisions, which is green or the square? So which one do you guys think it is? Once again, feel free to type it in the chat if you didn't get an opportunity to join the um, in the game. So which are considered market movers? Is it economic news, which is blue or the diamond, government and central bank decisions? Okay, so now you guys get to see there are three possible options. So um, retail traders or individual traders actually cause the least amount of movement in the market because it's only one person who's setting one trade. Now, um, when it comes to what actually causes the markets to move or the rates to change for a currency is the economic news, um, the government and central bank's decisions, and the stability of the economy. So retail traders really trade using this news or information to determine where the market is going to go based on how we're expecting the currency to move. So great job, guys. Okay, so true or false. Supply causes the market of the, sorry, the value of the market to rise. True or false. Supply causes the market value to rise. So does it cause the value of the currency to increase? If there's more supply of that currency in the central bank, for example, or does it cause the value to decrease? True or false? Supply causes the market to rise. True or false? If you have more of a currency inside of that central bank, 
does that mean that the value of that currency is rising or the value of that currency is falling? True or false, supply causes the market to rise. True is blue or the diamond, false is red or the triangle. True or false, supply causes... All right, so the answer is false. Supply, where there is more supply within a central bank of a currency, it means that less traders or investors wanted to invest in that currency, so the central bank has more of that currency. But where there's a greater demand, so many people want the currency that they are actually going to end up um, causing that currency to leave the central bank more rapidly. So um, that's demand. Demand causes the value of a currency to rise. Supply causes the value to decrease or fall. So great job, guys. All right, buyers are also called bulls. Is this true or false? True is blue or the diamond. False is red or the triangle. Once again, feel free to participate if you are in the chat but you didn't get a chance to join the game. So buyers are also called bulls. True or false? True is blue, red is false. Buyers are also called bulls. So I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a hint. Bulls means that the market is rising. So if you are in a bullish market, that means the value of that market is going up. If you are in a bearish market, that means the value of that market is going down. So are buyers causing the market to rise, which is bullish, or are buyers causing the market to fall, which is bearish? True or false, buyers are also called bulls. True is blue, false is red. Um, true is also the diamond, false is also the triangle. What do you guys think? All right, so great job guys. Um, buyers are also called bulls. So buyers, when they buy um, a currency or if they're buying something from that country, they are actually causing the value of that currency to rise. Bears, on the other hand, um, they, will, they are also called sellers because as they either sell that currency um, or um, sell something from, sorry, to that country, then they are causing the value of that currency to fall. So let's get to the next question. Blank causes the currency's value to rise. Guess what the blank is. So is it demand, which is red, or the triangle? Does demand cause the currency's value to rise? Is it supply, which is yellow, or the circle? Does supply cause the currency's value to rise? Is it hysteria, which is fair, or mass fair, um, which is blue, or the diamond? Or is it higher interest rates, which is green, or the square? Which one would you guys say is causing the currency's value to rise? Is it demand, which is red, or the triangle? Is it hysteria? which is blue or the diamond? Is it supply, which is yellow or the circle? Is it higher interest rates, which is green or the square? Which would you say is causing the currency's value to rise? Does demand, which is red, the triangle, cause the currency's value to rise? Is it supply, which is yellow or the circle, causes the currency's value to rise? Is it hysteria, which is blue or the diamond, causing the currency's value to rise? Or is it higher interest rates, which is green or the square? All right, everybody got it right. Good job. Good job. I am so proud of you guys. So yes, demand causes the currency's value to rise. So as, as more people want it, they buy it, and that causes the value of that currency to increase. Great job, guys. True or false? A bearish market is a selling or descending market. True or false? A bearish market is a selling or descending market. Blue is true, which is the diamond. False is red, which is the triangle. Now, I actually gave you guys a major hint on this one earlier, so even if you didn't get to watch the first um, session, then if you were listening earlier, I actually gave you the answer to this. So is a bearish market a selling or descending market, um, which is true or um, true is blue? Okay, I actually kind of gave you guys the answer. 
But yes, <laughs> a bearish market is also a selling or descending market because sellers are called bears. So when sellers are dominating the market and the value of that currency is falling, that is called a bearish market. So you have two players inside of the market. You have buyers and you have sellers. So you can actually say buyers versus sellers or um, bulls versus bears. So great job, guys. All right, so let's get to the next question. This is good news for the currency's value. Is it, now this one has more than one answer or more than one possible answer. So is it low interest rates, which is red or the triangle? Is it higher non-farm payroll? I didn't get to explain what non-farm payroll is to you guys, but it's a type of news. So just to give you a quick description, um, it's a type of news, basically, how many people are being paid that are not um, farmers. So that shows the development of a country. Do you think that that is good for a currency or a country? Or is that bad for a currency or a country? So is it low interest rates, which is red? This news is good for currency's value. Or the triangle, is it higher non-farm payroll, which is yellow or the circle? Is it lower unemployment rates? which is blue or the diamonds, or is it taxes on international imports, which is green or the square? So what do you guys think? Which news is good news for the currency? Low interest rates, which is red, higher non-farm payroll, yellow, lower unemployment, okay. Okay, so you guys um, did pretty good. So yes, low interest rates is good for a currency or a country's um, value. Higher non-farm payroll, because of course it shows the development of a country. So the more developed that a country is, the more investors want to invest because it shows that that currency is strong and it means that they are less likely to experience a decline in the amount of money that they have. So, um, and lastly, lower unemployment rates. So how the forex market works. So we've come to the end of our game. Great job, guys. But how the forex market works. Um, essentially, when you have a an amount of money inside of a country or a currency, it will actually cause the value that you have in that bank account to either increase or decrease. Or let me say it can affect it. In that Lincoln has actually um, told me before, so I don't know if you guys know, but um, Lincoln is um, a currency trader, but he actually had an account before where he invested in the Chinese yen. And while his money was in that account, there was some news that the president gave that was very good, and it actually caused the value of that currency to rise to about twice the amount. Now, that being said, he actually ended up earning twice the amount that he had placed into that bank just because of news that the government had given. He didn't have to buy anything. He didn't have to sell anything. He didn't have to open a business. It actually um, was just increasing because of the value of that currency. So Forex actually has the potential to affect um, accounts. So this is why we keep on um, talking about Forex. This is why it is so important. This is why it is one of the most um, traded markets in the world and it's one of the reliable markets because whether there is um like let's say stocks that crash or anything to that effect you don't have to worry about that with this market because as long as a country has a currency the market will exist so it's one of the more reliable markets now Great job, guys. I am so very, so, so, so very proud of you guys. Um, you guys did very well. Very, very well. Um, all right. So we can get straight into our class. <laughs> great job, Tania. You came first. Absolutely. Great job. Great job. So um, great job, Crystal. You came third. Great job. Great job, Godfrey. You came second. I am very, very proud of you guys. Um, keep working hard, keep tuning in, keep learning. Let's continue to grow. So let's get straight into our lesson. You guys did a very great job. 
So welcome to everyone. This may be your first time tuning in with us for the Elizabeth Independent or Elizabeth Forex classes. So this is one of the programs that I wanted to start with Elizabeth or in Elizabeth. But I decided instead of waiting until the elections happen to start it right away. Um, so that you guys can actually start to experience the economic environment now. So the sooner you guys get to trade, the better. We're going to start off. Hello, um, observation complete. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So yes, um, the more opportunities that you guys have to invest, the better. And we're going to be starting off with demo accounts or trading fake funds um, so that we can master our trading. And then as we improve, um, we can actually start trading with real funds and you get to become an investor. You get to start earning funds just by clicking a button. You get to be home. You don't even have to sit down and watch that computer. Um, there are smart trades that you can set where the trade can close itself. Um, you could go on about your day, whether you're working, whether you have, um, maybe you have more than one source of income. Maybe you have a business. Whatever it is that you are doing, you can actually do this while you are doing other things. All right, so let's get into it. So today is actually about how the Forex market works. Now, Angela, Monica, James, um, we are actually talking about the Forex market for beginners. So we will be getting to crypto um, later on in the Elizabeth trading development. But for right now, we're focusing on Forex, which has to do more with currencies like US dollar. Um, so basically, countries' currencies instead of cryptocurrencies. But definitely do stay tuned because we will be get going into um, cryptocurrencies after it is legalized once again for Bahamians to trade cryptocurrencies. So for now, um, I don't know why, but the government decided to make it illegal for Bahamians to trade cryptocurrency. Um, just for now, as soon as we get in, you guys don't have to worry about that. So first and foremost, you guys saw, we talked about trading sessions. There are four sessions um, within a 24 hour time period. The London session, which is from 3 a.m. to 12 p.m., which is kind of one of the first sessions. Um, the New York session, which is from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. When the London and, and New York session cross over, it's one of the most, um, I want to say volatile, but until you guys actually get to learn what that word really means, because we're going to touch on that tonight, um, it's one of those sessions that trades the most or the quickest. So you have the potential to earn the most amount of what we call pips um, during that time. So between the 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. time period, that's one of the best times to trade. Um, next, you have the Sydney session and also 7 a.m because the market is actually gearing up for that New York session to be open. So there's a lot of people that are also looking to set trades. And remember, you also have big companies and hedge funds and a number of other um, firms that are investing in these markets, causing the value of these currencies to rise and fall. But we're going to get into that in a moment. So then there's the Sydney session, which is from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. All of this is Eastern Standard Time. So if you are in another time zone, please convert it to your time zone um, from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. And lastly, Tokyo session, which is from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. So you have, you have a number of these sessions that cross over, but um, the best session to trade from what we have seen thus far is that London session crossing over with the New York session. So 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., best time to trade. All right, so moving on. We are going to finally get into currency pairs. So,
Can you guys hear me? Please let me know if you can hear. I'm noticing a number of persons are saying they can't hear. So is this any better? Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much for communicating. Really, really appreciate that. Okay, so currency pairs, just to get back to what we were on. Thank you guys once again for communicating. This is very important when it comes to being online. So thank you, thank you all so much. So currency pairs show us how much of one currency we can receive in exchange for another currency. So for example, USDJPY, the symbol actually is referring to how many Japanese yen a person would receive for each US dollar. So it works kind of like a scale, balancing the two currencies. Now, it's important to know that the currencies are not, um, for example, Japanese yen cannot possibly be worth more than the US dollar because in most cases, um, these currencies are actually tied to the US dollar. That is what gives it its value. So um, what happens in this market is just a matter of if there's something good that's happening inside of a country, then it's going to cause the value of that currency to increase um, or decrease. But the central bank is what keeps it within a specified rate or a specified um, value. Now, that being said, so if we put USDJPY on a balance, let's say, for example, US dollar actually increases, sorry, decreases, then you're going to see the market. It's going to make it look like the market is going down. So if the US dollar increases in value, then it's going to make it look like the market is going up. So currency pairs has, they have two parts. It's a base currency. So for example, the USD, which is the first currency, and then the quote currency, which is the second currency. So that in this case would be JPY. So the base currency is always in the front of the pair and it directly affects the movement on the chart. So once again, if the value of the US dollar is increasing, you're gonna see the markets going up. If the value of the US dollar is decreasing, it's gonna cause the markets to start going down. Um, so you're gonna see the direct price value. So just to give you the example I gave you earlier, if the US dollar is increasing, then you're gonna see the charts go up. So this is how the charts look. And if you see the US dollar decreasing, then you're gonna see the charts go down. And the numbers on the side would actually be the direct value of the US dollar compared to the Japanese yen. Lastly, you have the quote currency. So the quote currency is always in the back of the pair and the opposite movement is shown on the charts and it causes the opposite price value. So for example, the Japanese yen in this case, if the Japanese yen decreases in value, then you're gonna see the charts actually go up. But if the Japanese yen increases in value, then you're gonna see the charts go down. So the opposite of what happens to the currency in the back um, of the currency pair is what is shown on the markets. And, um, of course, it affects the price value as well. So if both stay the same or if both stay within the same range, then you're going to have what we call consolidation, which is when it looks like the market is moving sideways or you have very, very small candles. So you don't really see um, any movement happening. The market doesn't go up. The market doesn't go down. It just continues moving within a, a certain rate or range. So in or when it comes to currency pairs, you have what we call major currency pairs. So you may hear um, persons dealing with Forex call um, a US dollar.
currency pair a major currency pair? Any currency pair that contains US dollar is called a major currency pair. Because of course, all currencies in the Forex market uses the US dollar as the base for its value or its rate. So any currency pair containing US dollar is called a major currency pair. Any currency pair that does not contain the US dollar is called a minor currency pair. That doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't move because there's a lot of markets that don't contain um, the US dollar that moves very, very rapidly. And I'm gonna give you guys some examples of that when we get to the chart, but um, it's, it's just referred to as a minor currency pair. Now, something that you need to know as a retail Forex trader or as an individual that is looking to trade, um, you are once again called a retail trader, but you need a broker in order to trade in this market. SmartTrader.com, which I recommended to you guys the other night, um, that as well as MetaTrader 4 automatically gives you um, a demo account. So you don't necessarily have to sign up with the broker in order to practice. But when you're ready to start trading with real funds, you are going to need to sign up with a broker. So there are a number of brokers out there. You have IQ Broker, FXCM, XBT, PaxForex, CMC. So just to give Forex.com, just a number of different currency, sorry, a number of different brokers that you can um, refer to. But there's some important information that you want to pay attention to when it comes to a broker. So for example, I use Pax4x, but um, to give you an idea of what a broker is, so you know what is the best broker for you, a broker is an organization that enables retail traders, which would be you and I, to borrow some of their capital in any currency that they offer for any trade. Okay, so Jillian Theolone, I'm not going to try to pronounce the middle name, but Jillian Roberts said that he was using Avatrade as his broker. So um, just to explain this a little bit, whenever you are setting what they call a lot or a trade, um, you are actually trading at $10,000 um, per trade. But the broker, where they come in hand, um, would be if you don't have the ten thousand dollars per trade they're actually lending you the rest of the amount that you need for each of those trades now they cannot lose what it is that they are lending you because you can only lose what is um on your account and they also have a certain amount that they will stop at to prevent you from losing everything that's on your account just as a safety um boundary but we're going to teach you how to um, set manageable trades and to not risk more than you're willing to lose. So all of that is going to be a part of um, learning how to trade. And that's why you practice before you trade with real funds. So the broker actually helps you to stay um, within a good range, which is why you want a good broker so that they can give you the best possible rates um, and they can work with you as you need them to. So retail traders, as I explained, um, you would open up an account with them. So these organizations, brokers, were created to enable more money to be traded in the market by allowing more people to trade. So this is called liquidity. Liquidity just means there's a lot of people on the market, um, and as a result, with them putting money in for each of these trades, they're causing more money to be traded. And this is why you have $5.3 trillion that is traded in this market every single day. Um, so that's within the 24 hour time period for each day that the market is open. So you have definitely a high chance of um, earning funds, but you just need to learn how to read the markets in order to tell when it's gonna go up so you can buy and make money and when it's gonna go down so you can sell and make money. So whether it's going up or down, you can actually earn, but that's what these are for. So you can see where to enter and where to exit. All right, so more liquidity, AKA more people and more money in the market 
means that brokers can enable people with less amounts of money to trade. So um, a, t a long time ago, you had to have at least a million dollars in order to open up a Forex account and trade in this market. But now because of liquidity, um, you can actually open up a trade with less than that. So opening the an account with the Forex market, sorry, opening the Forex market to more than just the rich. So that's how they had more liquidity. Because now everyday persons like you and I, I mean, not saying anyone on here isn't rich, not saying I'm not rich, because you know, speak things into being absolutely. But um, uh, anybody can actually participate in this market, so long as you have $15 or more. And you guys will see how in a moment. So brokers realize that more traders means more liquidity. And that means more money being traded at a faster rate. So before um, everyday persons were allowed to trade on this market, the market would move, but not as much. And it would take much longer to actually go up or go down to any particular rate. So the fact that it's now open to everyone, like you and I, um, that's causing more movement. So that being said, um, this right here, causing it to move faster is called volatility. So that's where you have more people trading in the market and it's causing the market to move more rapidly. The faster it moves, the more volatile it is. So this is why brokers began to create different types of accounts to determine how much a trader may need to borrow for each trade. So this is what is called leverage. So um, we're going to get into a better or deeper explanation of that in just a moment. So using leverage, brokers established the following fees um, based on how much each person or each trader would need to borrow for each of their trades. So that would be determined by a lot size, which we are going to get to in a moment. So here are the types of fees that brokers charge, just so you can be aware. This is what you are looking for um, when it comes to the kind of broker that you want to sign up with. So the types of fees are the spread. So I'm going to show you guys the chart so you can see what the spread really is. Swap. Um, deposit fees and withdrawal fees. So deposit fees and withdrawal fees are straightforward. Um, basically, to add funds onto your account, brokers charge a deposit fee. To withdraw funds from your account, um, brokers charge a fee as well. Now, for Pax Forex, if you deposit more than $300, well, $300 or more, then you won't have any deposit fees. Um, with the withdrawal fee, so this varies based on broker. For Pax for X, they will either charge you ten dollars or five percent of what it is that you are withdrawing, whichever is the highest for them. So, for example, if you're withdrawing ninety dollars, then they will withdraw the ten. Sorry, I said ten. I meant five. So they will either withdraw the five or the five percent. So if you're withdrawing ninety dollars, then um, it would be the five, but if you are withdrawing $100 or more, essentially, they would go with the 5%. So swap is a fee that is charged based on if you're in the market or in a trade for more than one day, then each day you'll be charged a fee called swap. Now, it's, it's a very low fee. But again, based on the broker, it's it varies. Lastly, for the spread, the spread is when you are in the market and you are setting a trade. So I'm going to go to the chart so you guys could see this, and this will make a lot more sense. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, so we're going to go to the charts. Just give it a moment to come up. 
All right. Now, when you are trading on a demo account, it's going to look like a live account. So everything is exactly the same. Now, um, you guys can see I'm on the USDJPY currency pair. Once again, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, so swap is also an overnight fee, but um, basically if you're in a trade for more than 24 hours, you will be charged swap. So the spread, if you can see this red arrow right here, this is where you would be entering the market. However, the swap for a sell just to give you guys an idea. So usually in the Forex market, if you're selling, then it's gonna be red. And if you are buying, then it's gonna be green. So I'm just gonna represent um, the colors. So it has to go beyond a certain amount of pips. So this is what the spread is. It has to go beyond a certain amount of pips for a buy it has to go above the spread. For a sell, it has to go below the spread. So you earn money in um, selling if, or when you sell, so you would just click on this button. And when you sell, the market just has to go below this red line in order for you to start earning money. And for a buy, just click on this button and the market just has to go beyond this green line in order for you to start earning money for a buy. So the spread is usually just, it could be as low as um, 0.5 pips. It could be as low as, sorry, it could be as high as, depending on the market, um, 30 pips is the highest that I've ever seen a spread. But um, that's for those seriously rapidly moving um, markets. Like, for example, GBP, CAD, GBP, A. I think it was more like NZD, AUD, but we are going to get to those um, later on in our sessions. So GBP stands for Great British Pound, AUD stands for Australian Dollar, and they actually, what I love about Smart Trader is they show you what the currencies are that you are trading um, whenever you're selecting a currency pair. So we are going to have a session focusing on how to actually use the platform just so you know how to... Um, chart or how to use your charts. But just to get back to our lesson. Okay, so I'm not understanding why you guys can't see my screen. So I am going to look into that. But for now, we can always go back to one of the charts that we saw earlier. So just an example, USDJPY, you can't see the arrow that I was talking about earlier, but you can see where the candles end here, for example. So let's say the, I don't know if you guys could see it so well, but there's a red candle that started to form at the end there. So in this market, the green candles represent the market going up, the red candles represent the market going down. So if this market was about to start going down and you decided to sell, then the market would only have to go, um, if you see where 110.000 is, just an example of where a line might be for the market to go below when you're selling to start making money, then that's just an example of where the spread might go to. So where it says, 110.200. If you were buying and you're expecting for the market to go up, that's just an example of where the line might be for whenever um, you are buying. The market just has to go above that line and you start to earn money. So it's, it's easier to see once you can actually see the charts. I really hope that I'll be able to show you guys my chart at least before the end of tonight. Um, so I'm hoping to work out something so you guys could actually 
look at that. Now, that being said, we can get back to where we were. So those are the types of fees that they would charge, but they're actually relatively low or let me not say relatively, let me be honest with you. It's pretty low. Um, your spread, if you're trading at, let's say 10 cents a pip and they only charge you two pips, that's really only um, 20 cents that you're, that the market has to go above in order for, or that they would be charging you um, for that trade, but you actually don't necessarily pay it out of your account. It's being paid out of the earnings that you get for that trade. So um, the spread is paid whether you actually earn something or not. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily something that you have to worry about. And you're only temporarily borrowing the funds for them from them for each of these trades. Now, you guys heard me mention Pax for x So there are four main types of accounts. There's the VIP, standard, mini, and cent. But the amount that you would need to open up an account with varies based on the broker. So pax for x allows for you to open an account um, with the VIP, you would need a minimum of $10,000. The standard, a minimum of 2,000. The mini, a, mini, a minimum of $100. And the cent, a minimum of $15. Now this is specifically to Bahamians. Um, so in different regions, Brokers also will charge you different rates based on what your country allows or permits or limits them to. But for pax for x this is the amounts that a Bahamian can open up an account with. So yes, you can open up an account with as little as $15 with pax for x So Jaris Roll says the spread is the brokers pay. Once they get theirs, everything else is yours. Right. But they pay themselves first. Exactly. So the market pretty much just has to go above if you're buying above a certain line um, or below a certain line if you're selling. And like Jerry said, they get theirs. So it's not some big fee that you have to pay. But you guys will see as we really get into the, into the charts and we start really trading. So each trading account applies a set value of money um, to each lot size. Now, we are actually going to get into what is a lot size so you guys can see um, what that refers to. For each trade that you set, you must choose your lot size to represent how much money you are using to set that trade. So just an example. So when you're trading or when you're in the market, this is how your lot size will actually look. You will either choose 0 0.01, 0 0.10. So the lowest you could go is 0 0.01. Um, and you can actually go all the way up to whatever number you want to. But the lowest you can go is 0 0.01, 0 0.10, 1.00, and so on and so forth. Now, with a mini and standard trading account, the lot sizes 0 0.01 would be 10 cents or would represent 10 cents. So you wanna make sure that you actually put in the right amount. 